Hey everyone, and welcome to my, well, my actual first tutorial of PSA and Roblox. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to make a follow-up attack. So basically, it's an attack that, when something happens, will follow up from another attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this attack here, my S3S, attack S3S, which is this forward tilt, follow up with this one, attack S3 low, this kick, which is will be the second hit. First thing I'll actually want to do is, actually I'll keep that like that. Um, you want to keep Brawlbox here so that you can refer to the animation and the frame of frames of the animation. Since I made this animation from scratch, um, I'll definitely need to keep referencing um, the number of frames so I can see. Oop, wrong folder. Silly me. So I can see when to place events and stuff. So now that's there, let's open up Smash Attacks. Fit Captain Duck Pack. Now, also in this video, I will include a sort of resource pack that will include all the fit and fit motion etc. dot packs for every character. I won't include the costumes since you can go to the KCMM and download a costume um, to view. It's much easier that way. But I'll put all the packs and motion etc. packs in that in that file. Okay. So what you want to do is go to sub action 50 which is the attack S3S. Now this is his forward tilt with a timer, a si um, offensive collisions, another timer, terminate collisions and another timer. This timer doesn't actually do anything at the moment. But as you can see the attack does 6 damage. One thing I'll quickly do is show you how all the stuff in offensive collisions. So you, ha you have the bone slash ID here. Bone is obviously the bones of the character. Bone 14 for Captain Falcon is his left shoulder, just so you know. I'll also put a link to the bone collaboration topic because there's a bone that lists there's a bone. There's a topic that lists all the bones, the uh, bone IDs for all the characters. It's extremely useful. I frequently revisit it, and it's great. Yeah. ID is well the sort of ID of the offensive collision. Each one has to be different. If they're the same, then they will sort of unreact to each other and sort of cancel each other out um, when they come up. So you want to use the same ones for say if you're using doing a sex kick. So if I was doing a sex kick I would copy these, put them here, have another timer and then put the terminate collisions after that next timer because uh, so that if there was another Terminate Collisions there, it would actually repeat the hitbox, which was actually something that was wrong about Beautiful Joe V1. Enough about that. Damage, obviously the percentage damage that is inflicted on the opponent, the attack. This does 6, and remember that this is in hexadecimal, so if I type in A here, it will do 10 damage. Hexadecimal counts from 1 to F. A, B, C, D, E, and F is equal to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Trajectory, this is also in hexadecimal. The default, <laughs> the default angle is 169. This is the sort of angle that one tripping moves use, two pretty most attacks use, the sort of forward upward angle. Not quite 45 degrees is fairly low, but it's probably the most useful and most well-rounded angle. Some angles you should know right off the bat though, 
2D, oh, 2D is 45 degrees. 5A is straight up, so 90 degrees. I think 87 is 180 degrees, so backwards. 10E is straight down, so if you want to use a spike, you use 10E. And 0 is flat. But actually, 0 usually kind of sends them downwards a bit because of Brawl's gravity. So you'll want to, by default, have 169. It's the most useful angle. Weight, knockback, and knockback growth. Now, these two are actually in the wrong order. This should be shield damage and knock and weight knockback. So these these four affect sh shield damage. It's literally the additional damage that the attack will do to shields. So Marth's um, neutral B, fully charged, has a very high shield damage. So it's high enough to break the shield. And knockback growth is proportionally how much. Um, distance is added to the attack as your opponent's percentage gets higher. You'll... No, I'll say that afterwards. And, as you can see here, there's weight knockback and... Weight knockback there, and base knockback. Weight knockback is additional knockback adds additional knockback depending on the character's weight so a heavier character will probably get a larger knockback force than a lighter character if the um, if you have weight knockback there and um, base knockback is the minimum distance that the target will travel regardless of um, damage so if their damage is zero this is the distance they'll travel so if their damage is zero, then they won't move anywhere. They'll just get flinched. Now, here are a couple of things that you should note. One is that if you set both of these to zero, they if you set both the knockback growth and the base knockback to zero, then they will not flinch at all. If you... And they will not flinch, they will not move, not anything. The attack will simply do damage. If you set this to a number... So the knockback growth, but not the base knockback. Since it's sort of added on, rather than multiplied, um, you will actually sort of get a slight sort of flinch hit. You can also solely add base knockback, so no matter how much damage they have, it will always do the same knockback. Size is the size of the hitbox. This isn't actually in hexadecimal, so you can just use a regular decimal number. 5.3 is a sort of regular size for Beautiful Joe's hitboxes. I think they get kind of scaled down for a size, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically that. Offsets, Z, Y, and X. Y, just so you know, is pretty much always vertical. Always vertical. So, this is height, actually. Um, I probably want to change that to zero, actually. Two. No, zero. Yeah, zero. Um, whereas Z and X offsets kind of depend on which way the character is facing. If they are facing to the default right, um, it not actually it not only depends on which way the character is facing, but also which character it is. Sometimes I see X offset used. Sometimes I use Z off see Z offset used. One is depth, and one is horizontal, um, the horizontal plane. And you can kind of experiment and see what they have in their other um, hitboxes to determine where to put that. One key thing that you should note, though, is that if it's at bone zero, if the bone is set to zero, zero, that bone is one, always set in between their feet. And is two. Um, always moved horizontally by Z offset, I believe. You're also, since it's set by their feet, you're also probably 
fight like at their feet. It's not on their feet, so it won't move with their foot. It will stay in the same place unless you offset it. I'd always recommend using a Y offset if you're using Bone Z, unless you literally want the hitbox on the ground, or you're making a hitbox so big that you'll do a sort of hemispherical thing. Trip rate, obviously the amount, the percentage amount that um, a hitbox is able to trip, cause tripping. Um, so you always have to have the number between zero and one. Hit lag multiplier, how much hit lag the um, both characters suffer when the attack connects. If you have it at like a higher number, such as three, then there will sort of there will be a moment where the char both the characters will just be still, and then the animation will continue. Uh, a good example would be Wolf's forward tilt, the first hit of it. Directional influence multiplier, this is the multiplier that affects how much your opponent can maneuver themselves during the attack and sort of alter their angle. If you're sort of a more advanced brawl player, you'd know what DI is. And flags, flags are very interesting. They affect a number of different things. They affect priority. The main things that you want to know is that they affect priority and hitbox sound effect and hitbox graphics. This number here is what affects priority. This is putting it in its absolute simplest terms by the way. It's actually got to do with bits and that's a bit complicated. But this is in its ab absolute simplest terms. For a character to have a good priority for the move, i.e. the move clanks with other moves, then um, you want this number to be at least 8, between 8 and F. If you don't want it to clank with other moves, then you have to have it 0 to 7. These two are the ones that affect flags and hit sound effects. For If you want an attack to have a different flag but have the same sound effect, add to the hitbox flag onto the end. Zero is the, um, zero, zero is the regular one. There's a load of different ones. Uh, add the hitbox onto the end of the move. The flags. And yeah, you literally have to add it on. So 40, if I wanted to have um, darkness flag, which I think is flag 14 or something like that. Um, or that may be aura flag or something. You wouldn't put 1-4, you'd put 5-4 instead. 1-4 will produce a sort of generic sound effect, whilst 5-4 will produce the same sound effect that the move would normally have. I'll put it back to 4-0. And yeah, that's sort of the main, those are the main things that you want to know about offensive collisions. I didn't actually talk about the timers. Timers, there are two kinds of timers. One is the synchronous, which is sort of explained down here. Pause the current flow of events until set time is reached. These start counting at the very beginning of the sub action. So this one, 36 frames, as you can see here, um, the event will not trigger this, no parameter, if there was an event there, but it would not trigger until this frame, frame 36. Synchronous timers, however, will not trigger until they reach the certain point in the sub-action. So, this synchronous timer will not trigger until this timer and these offensive collisions come out. Synchronous timers you use for set loops, looping stuff, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's the um, explaining all the collisions and stuff. But <laughs> we haven't actually done anything. So sorry about that. But, you know, just want to clarify for you guys. Uh, next part, we will actually get started on... The, well, the next part of this tutorial, we will actually get started on coding the what you do to make this attack, this attack, follow up into this attack, 
and I will see you guys next time.